I'm sure you've heard the term, it's my way or the highway. Well, oftentimes we tend to want things our way and even in our timing. Well, scripture tells us that we are to live by God's ways and God's timing. Well, today, Pastor Robert Favela and Pastor Grace Johnson sit to explore these lessons from the book of Haggai and see how we should consider our ways. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unpack. We're so glad that you decided to join us. Hey, I'm joined by Pastor Grace Johnson. How are you doing, Grace? Doing well. How are you? Good. Hey, we're looking forward just to having an amazing time with you and unpacking something that we believe is going to bless your life. But I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever experienced or expected more and instead you got a pattern of not enough? I'll give you an example. You know, Christmas season is right around the corner. Have you ever expected more appreciation from your kids? Oh, 100%. For, for what you do for them? <laughs> it's like you work all day long and then all of a sudden they're complaining, not doing what they're supposed to do. And you're like, really? Like, this is what I get for all of my labor? Or maybe you pick out that special gift and it's like you're looking forward to them being surprised and being grateful. And instead they kind of toss your gift aside. You're just like, oh, like that's the last <laughs> thing I'm going to ever get for them ever again. But all joking aside, we have experiences. Maybe for yourself, you were expecting some sort of, you know, return on your investment and it didn't come through. Or maybe you didn't have enough satisfaction from what should satisfy you in life. Maybe it's not enough joy, even though you got what you wanted. Maybe it's not enough comfort, no matter what you have wrapped yourself in, thinking this is going to do it for me. Maybe it's not enough time or, or money because it seems to somehow, some way, leak out. No matter how much you save, no matter how much you try and schedule, it just seems to go somewhere and you're left wanting. If that's you, that's what this episode of Unpacked is all about. In fact, there's a phrase in scripture that we're going to unpack that says, hey, if you're experiencing this, consider your ways. Consider what's going on beneath the surface. And in fact, take it a step further. Consider God's ways. And then he will help you make that shift. And we're going to do it in an interesting way. We are going through a series on the minor prophets. Some of you might be like, what minor prophets? What in the world is that? We will explain that in just a moment. But we are going to take the minor prophet, a book in the Bible, of the name of Haggai. And most people skip over these. That's why we chose to select them, because every word of the Bible, it, it, it's, it's life-giving. It gives us strength. It gives us direction. And we wanted to pull out one truth that we believe can help you. And so because most people have not read the book of Haggai, Pastor Grace, I, I wondered if it wouldn't be great if you could just lay a foundation for us and give the viewers just a brief overview of the book of Haggai. Yeah, actually, before we dive in, I did want to share a little bit about the book of Haggai that I really believe is going to help us today. Yeah. So the book of Haggai is written by, you guessed it, Haggai, <laughs> who is, is a it Haggai prophet. or is it Haggai? I'm, I, I learned Haggai, but yes. maybe it's Haggai. Who no, knows? No, no. I'm just like, I'm like <laughs> but Haggai the prophet writes this book, and he's actually writing to people who had returned from exile to Jerusalem. And these people in Jerusalem had started rebuilding the temple. They got to work on God's house. But in the midst of building the temple, they lost sight of their purpose. And they kind of forgot of forgot about what they were doing. They lost sight of their priorities. And so in this book, Haggai, God actually sends Haggai to the people with a couple purposes. One is a command. He tells Haggai to command the people to rebuild the temple, start building again, put God's house before your own house. He sends Haggai with a consideration for the people. Hey, consider your ways. Let's examine how you've been doing things and how does that compare with how God wants you to do things. And then he sends a comfort. Through Haggai, God sends a word of encouragement to declare to the people of Jerusalem, hey, I'm with you. I've got you. You have nothing to fear. Yeah. And what we want to do is we want to be able to even just read a passage of scripture that we believe will set the stage for everything. So if you got your Bibles, if you got your phones, hey, now's a good time to pull it out because we are going to read a few verses, and then we're going to unpack from there. I'm going to read from Haggai chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Right away in Scripture it's saying, Look, these people are saying, I, We're not down to build the house yet. Like, we got other, other plans, other agendas. 
And then it says in verse 3, Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Speaking of God's temple. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you have never, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does, does so to put them into, bag, into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house that I might take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house. And now that's a lot, but I want to park just at that last statement. God is appalled at how his house is being treated. And he says, you're experiencing all this frustration and tension because your priorities are wrong. He says, you're busying yourself with your own house. And for many of you, you know what that feels like. We got responsibilities, yeah, right? We should and it's be. like, it's not like God doesn't care about our responsibilities, right, right Pastor Grace? So that's where I want to start and begin to unpack this, Pastor Grace. So I want to ask you that question. What does it mean to busy myself with my own house? Yeah, I, actually, I really love in, in Haggai, what busy actually means is to run towards in haste. Mm. To It's not just like this slow, like, oh, you know, I'm just kind of ending up there, but there is intention. You're running towards it. And um, usually for us, it means our obligations, right? We're running towards the things that we have to do, our to-do list. And actually, as I thought about this for myself, I thought, what do I busy myself with? And I usually busy myself with what's immediate or urgent instead of, and I allow those things to take priority over what's important. So whether that's bills or my children or... Uh, work or relationships, whatever that may look like. And I actually thought of, it's kind of a funny illustration, but every morning I have this house plant that I look, I like to set outside and it, it doesn't necessarily need sun, but I like to give it some extra sun. And every morning, no matter how early or late we are, I'm always like, oh, I need to get this plant outside. And it's really inconvenient. My husband is always like, oh my gosh, I don't think that plant needs to go outside. It's your third child. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so it's like, we're trying to get the kids in the car. And that's really what's important is getting them to school on time, setting them up for success for the day. But I'm like, well, I have to get this plant outside because this seems really urgent right now. And that's always what I'm running to in the morning. Yeah, it is interesting that this word, like you were pointing out, it literally illustrates this this compulsion to want to run towards and away from something else. It's like when we tell our kids, hey, it's time to clean your room. All of a sudden it's like, boom, they're gone. They're out in the backyard doing something else. That's the illustration of what this word means when God's saying, look, I want my house built. And it's like, you're running the other way towards even good things, responsibilities of life and obligations. God cares about those things. But the idea is where is our concern? And that's why he asked twice in that passage that we read, Consider your ways. So we want you to do a practical thing. If you're viewing right now, we want you to participate with us. Take out a piece of paper, take out your phone, open up the notepad. I'll give you some time to do it. The cool thing about watching is you can pause. So go and find that right now. And what we want you to do is this. List the different areas of your life that concern you. Right now, just, just rattle them off. I know it may be a long list, but whatever you can write down, Write them down. What areas of your life do you busy yourself with? They don't even have to be bad. List the good ones. You know, whether it has to do with work or, or retirement or parenting or health. L keep list. What are all the areas of life that concern you? And, and if you need to be able to do this later, you can pause it. You can do it later, even after the show is done. But this is where you start because here's the next step. Once you make this list, here's step number two. Now write one word next to each area that best describes your experience with that thing. For instance, if it has to do with work or your finances or your parenting, write word association next to that. Is the one word that you're writing down stressed or tired or frustrated, disappointed, unsatisfied, alone? Do you feel helpless? Do you feel empty? Do you... Maybe you feel indifferent because you've gone through it for so long. It's just kind of like, I'm just I'm kind of used to this by now. Whatever it is, make that list 
and then write a word next to each area because we're going to build upon that. You need to be honest with yourself. Yeah, you really do need to be honest with yourself. And as you're being honest with yourself, you may look at your list and feel a little bit discouraged like, oh gosh, these are, I've got a lot of things on my list. I have a lot of concerns with my list, but I actually have really good news for you. Even in that space of maybe feeling discouraged, I have good news. And the news is this, you're not alone. You are not alone in this. The people of Jerusalem were actually dealing with the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And they had a list very similar to yours. I'm actually gonna go back to Haggai, verses five through seven, it says, now therefore, Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag of holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And in this passage, there's actually a human problem that is present because there are a lot of mistruths that we've allowed ourselves to believe, and the people of Jerusalem also allowed themselves to believe as well. They had their list of, I need to sow, I need to eat, I need to drink, I need to be full. And in doing so, they had their priorities out of line. If we go back to Haggai 1 verse 2, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. So as God saying, hey, rebuild the temple, they're like, no, God, it's not time yet. My priorities aren't in line. I need to take care of my list first. And the people of Jerusalem had bought into this lie that there's a timing issue. Your, your time hasn't come, God. We've got things that we need to take care of. And as I thought about this, I thought of maybe some other lies that we can allow ourselves to believe. One thing that you know I think we believe oftentimes is I'm gonna be satisfied if I get the right outcome. If I put all my work into this list and I get the outcome I want, then I'm gonna be happy. Or if I get my list in order, things are gonna be good and everything will fall in line and then I'll take care of other things. Or I even thought of this lie that I can buy into at times and it's I have to care about my list because no one else cares about my list. Okay. And the problem with this is that the fulfillment of our list, everything that you know gets fulfilled, even the good things like our kids, work, family, that alone doesn't satisfy us. And Haggai says, he says, you're harvesting little, you never have enough, you don't have your fill, no one is warm, you put your money into bag with holes. What their list was doing was present, pre it was presenting them with some type of, you know, output but it wasn't satisfying them. It just wasn't quite enough. Yeah, and out of the Father's heart for you, out of God's heart for them, he wasn't gonna leave them there in this place of wanting. He's saying like, basically, wake up. Like, be honest with what you're feeling. You, you're not being fulfilled, it's not lasting, it's not secure, and I want you to get to the root of the problem. So he starts with consider your ways, and then he moves on to reveal his ways. So it shows how our focus is off. Haggai 1.7, a part of it, it says, build my house that I may take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified. He's saying, look, you need to have this kingdom focus first. It's my house first. You know, in scripture, you don't have to look far to recognize the analogy between the master and the servant, right? The shepherd and his sheep. And even on a natural sense, when you take a look at a master's house and the servant's quarters, the master's house is like the palatial palace. The servant's quarters is like the, the, the humble place. Even in a nice home, it's, it's, it's the humble room or, or some casita out and back. It, it isn't the reverse. We, we serve the master's house. It's his house first. And oh, and by the way, we get to abide with him. <laughs> we get to live with him. And many times I need to remind be to be reminded where the focus is supposed to be. And here's the thing. It isn't either or. It's like, okay, God's house first. I need to serve more. I need to give more. I'll do away with this list. No. <laughs> That's kind of the paradigm we want to be able to shatter. It's God cares about your list. So here's what we want you to do. Pull out your list again. The list where you listed all the areas that you wrote down. And here's what I want you to do. For each area of life on your list, 
write down a promise that tells you God cares more than you do. And if this is hard for you, maybe if this is brand new, let me give you some examples that would make it from my list. Mine would have to do with raising my kids. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Who does that? I don't do that. God promises that. When it comes to provision, Psalm 37, 25 says, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. It's what the psalmist is saying, look, I've lived a full life and I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. God is going to supply. I don't have to worry to the point of being anxious. It's made my list, but guess what? God cares more than I do about my provision. Is it safety and health? Psalm 91 verses 5 through 7 from the New Living Translation says, Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Is health or safety on your list? Guess what? God cares more. How about you're just worried about everything on the list? <laughs> That's, that, that could be me at some times. Matthew 6, 33, 31 through 33 says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. He knows that. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What all, what's all these things? All the things that made your list. All these things will be added unto you. If there's one thing that we want you to understand in this unpacked, it's this. God cares more about your list than you do. He's already been invested in it. He's the one who shaped you, created you. He knows your story. And trust me, we can empathize with the weight of what it feels like to be a parent, for what it feels like to have a mortgage, what it feels like to have bills to pay or, or mental health or whatever the case may be. God's aware of that. And he cares more than you do. So he's saying, look, consider your ways. Look what I put my priority on. Consider my, consider my ways. And then make this shift. And take a look at even the response of what God's people did. Yeah, and I love that as the people of Jerusalem, they consider their ways. You know, they actually take heed to what Haggai's saying. Yeah. And then they consider God's ways. And I love what happens next because it drives them to obedience. Mm -hmm. In Haggai 1, 12 through 14, it says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Zehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai the messenger of the Lord spoke to the people with the Lord's message. I am with you, declares the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of, Je of Jehozadak, Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. I, I would like to say that you did an excellent job pronouncing all of those <laughs> names. But it's so huge to see their response, that they obeyed. But I, I want to focus on that last sentence that you read, that last part of that verse, Pastor Grace. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord. They, they came together. And when it comes to making this shift, when it comes to like, man, I'm left wanting. I have this list. I'm coming up short. I'm considering my ways. I'm taking a look. Are my priorities off? All right, God, you need to help me. You don't have to do it alone. In fact, you're made to do it in partnership with other people. So Pastor Grace, let, let's unpack that for a second. How essential is having people to partner with when making a shift towards God's ways. This is everything. And I know we talk about it all yeah. the time, but we really do need people. I actually thought about, you know, the people of Jerusalem, they're building a temple. But if you're even building a house and you build a wall and you're trying to get it up, you can't lift that yourself. <laughs> you need people to help you. And in the same way, we're actually building something big. We're building the house of God and yeah. we can't do it alone. Even when it comes to our list, we can't do it alone. And I actually thought when, we're, when you're building a house, what are some things you need? You need someone to help you with the heavy lifting. And mm -hmm. I just thought in spiritual terms, what does this look like? We need people to pray for us and That's with good. us. I thought about how when you're building, you need somebody who can stabilize or be an anchor. You know, I've had 
I've helped my husband like hang a TV on the wall. And as he's trying to level things out, he needs me to be a stabilizing hand so that he can do what needs to be done with measurements. And I thought we need That's people great. who can remind us of the word of God, who can anchor us to the source. And then I thought, you know, you just need some moral support. Sometimes you need someone who's going to say, you're doing a good job. Keep going. We really need encouragement. And God has gifted people with that encouragement. And even Jesus knew this. In Luke 10, he appoints 72 people to go out and not one person goes out alone. He sends them out two by two. Yeah, you may be looking in your world and maybe you've seen an example of this. Maybe you haven't, but it's always needed in our lives some form of someone to partner with us, to journey with us. Many of you might have heard the familiar phrase, hey, I need accountability in my life. Someone to be able to hear, what are your plans? What are you going to do? Because you know that between you and God, you can share the plans, but we were made for more accountability than that. We need other people, other people of precious faith, other brothers in Christ, other sisters in Christ who can know our plans, saying, hey, this is the adjustment I've been praying through. This is what I've been thinking. I'm telling you this, like Pastor Grace was saying, A, so that you can pray for me, B, so that you can encourage me, but also C, so you can be like, you can check on updates, but you're really keeping me accountable. It's like, hey, how is the progress going? I still only see one wall up, you know what I mean, in a post. Like, you said you were going to build a house. Like, you said you are going to redo your finances. You said you were going to this or that. It's someone who loves you enough to be able to check in on you, to encourage you, to pray with you, to journey with you. And I just encourage you, that's what church is for. You know, if, if you're a part of Cottonwood, hey, dig into the community opportunities that we have. If you're a part of another church, dig into whatever relationships are there because God wants to supply his resources to you through relationships. But the key is you have to have a plan. This ultimately has to flesh out into this making the shift has to be intentional. So I want you to do one final thing with your list, your magic list that you've been evolving. I want you to take out that list and I want you to take one area, just one area on your list and write down a name and a next step or next steps to that thing. What, what do you mean? I mean, take one area. Let's say you wrote down on their parenting or you wrote down on their finances or take one area that you want to develop, that you want to make that shift. And I want you to ask God, God, who do you want to partner with me in this one thing? Write down their name. Maybe write down two if you have two. Write it down so you can see it, so you can pray over it, so you can text them, maybe even after watching this. And if you know what may perhaps a next step is, maybe you don't know how you're going to be debt-free. Maybe you don't know how you're not going to lose your temper anymore with your kids. Maybe you don't know this or that. But is there at least one step in front of you that God has illuminated saying, hey, this is the first step I want you to take? You know, I want you to go to this finance class. You know, I want you to start going to Cottonwood College. I want you to be at church service every single weekend. I want you to start practicing, even in small measure, what it looks like to give regularly. I want you to join a team and serve. Whatever the case may be, take that first step and let somebody know. Journey with someone. You'd be surprised how much God can be able to shift you from a place of wanting and lacking and being frustrated to putting his priorities first and journeying with someone and realizing, hey, you know what? It isn't either or. God said, put my kingdom first and all these things will be added unto you. So wherever you're at, as we listen to the Holy Spirit, we just want to bring you to a place of being able to say, God, where is this one place that you want me to make a shift? And so Pastor Grace, uh, just a way of this, even wrapping up this episode, I want you to somehow just encourage just the viewers around this and ask Ask the Holy Spirit, how, how, can you, how can we help them to be able to introspectively look in their lives? And then if you could just end by praying for them, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, actually, as we were yeah. even, you know, unpacking Haggai, and as I was reading through, I found something that was really encouraging to me. Yeah. And so before we do pray and before we wrap up, I wanted to share that encouraging yeah. thought because I hope and I pray that it would be encouraging for you as well. And, you know, as a people of Jerusalem, take that shift. They consider their ways. They consider God God's ways. And they walk in obedience to begin rebuilding the temple. God actually speaks to them and says this to them in Haggai 2 verse 8. He says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. And I love that because God doesn't just care about your list. God doesn't just care about your next step, but he actually has the resource you need too for yeah. your list, for your next step 
for building his house. And he says, all the silver and gold is mine. All of it's already mine. And if you can put first things first, I'm going to take care of the rest. But then he goes on to say even more. And this is a part that really spoke to me and I'm praying will speak to as well. In verse 9, it says, the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. In this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. In this place of choosing first things first, in this place of honoring God's house, in this place of committing my list to God, he gives peace. And I think oftentimes, even as we're looking at our list and the fulfillment of our list and the planning of our list, it's our ultimate goal is that we want peace. We want to wake up with peace. We want to go to bed with peace. We want peace in our finances, at work, with our children. And God is the God of peace. And he's not just a God of resource with silver and gold, but he's a God of perfect peace. And I really believe and know that that's what he wants to give to you today. In all of this, even as you consider God cares about my list, he cares to give you peace too in that list, in whatever you're facing. So I wanted to go ahead and pray for us today and we'll close. God, we thank you for speaking to us today, even through this book that was written years ago. We thank you that as we consider our ways, as we consider your ways, as we choose to walk in obedience, as we consider the shift that we can make to our life, that you're not just a God of resource, but you're a God of peace. God, would you continue to open our eyes to see things the way you see them? Would you help us to have a new revelation of how much you care for us? Would you help us to have a revelation of love for your house? Would you help us as we continue to commit our list to you, as we consider your ways, as we walk in obedience to you, would you grant us your peace, the perfect peace that can't be taken or stolen or robbed from us, but as we commit ourselves to you, that you give to us each and every day a full measure of it. God, we ask that you would bless each person who's watching, that you would be with them, that you would keep them. We thank you for all this, and we give glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Grace. Hey, thank you so much for watching Cottonwood Church's YouTube channel. Uh, we pray that today you've been pointed to Jesus, and maybe you want to take some next steps in following Jesus. You can actually text the word HOPE to 605-405, and uh, it'd be the quickest way for you to be able to get connected one-on-one with a pastor, uh, or as well, so that we can send you a free book. And since you're here on the channel, why don't you take a moment, just click that subscribe button. And maybe you want to support the church financially. Maybe you want to give. You can actually uh, click the give button there or, or, or click the link that is in the description. Thank you so much. Check out our channel, all the different videos that are here. We pray that you would be blessed. We pray that you would be pointed to Jesus. Hey, and until next time, we love you and we can't wait to see you.